All right. So we've been learning about energy. And uh, here's a, a typical kind of question that helps us know whether or not we understand what's happening in terms of energy changes. We're using just a simple um, uh, uh, small system. Here it's just a, a cup of water. And we say that this cup of water has a known heat capacity. Do you remember what heat capacity means? Not really. The capacity to hold heat? Yeah, basically that's right. It's the how much heat it can hold before its temperature changes. Because the system can absorb the heat, but then as it absorbs, eventually the energy of the system will change. Now, heat capacity of systems is not the same uh, from one system to another because they're not all the same mass and they're not made of the same material. Okay, so we have been given information about this cup here, which is nice because it's always nice to have a, a heat capacity. We, they know that it takes 720 joules to change the temperature of this cup, just one degree Celsius. So how much will it absorb? How much has the, the cup absorbed if the temperature changed from 19.2 to 23.5 degrees Celsius? Uh, it's 720 joules for every degree Celsius, and 23.5 minus 19.2. Okay, so we just put in there final, minus the initial, right? And uh, 4.3 is my change in temperature. 4.3 degrees Celsius. Uh, and it's 720 joules for every degree Celsius. Very good. Now, you know, you can set this up and say how many joules, if you want to, and say you start off with 720 joules for every one degree Celsius and 4.3 degrees Celsius. Our units cancel out and we're left in joules. That's fine. Or if you can just do it in your head right there and see that the degrees Celsius are going to cancel out, then 720 times 4.3, you're going to be left with joules. All right. Very good. So that is how much energy um, is absorbed by the cup when the cup changes a temperature of 4.3 degrees Celsius. Excellent. Now, we have mentioned this before, but um, this is important to recognize that specific heat is basically the heat capacity for a given chemical, for a given kind of chemical. And all different chemicals have different heat capacities. So you can also identify the amount of energy transferred or the heat change in a chemical reaction, sorry, not the energy, but the heat change in a chemical reaction by using this equation, which is similar to this specific heat, or sorry, the heat capacity times change in temperature. But here, the heat capacity is for one specific amount of a chemical, and usually it's water. So we need to know the mass of the water, and then we use the specific heat of that water, and then we can find the change in temperature, or we use the change in temperature to find out how much heat was transferred. So all of these, uh, this equation here is important. Do we have to memorize that equation? Well, um, the energy that you would put in to try to memorize the equation is, is kind of the wrong kind of energy. Uh, yes, you need to know this equation and understand it. But if you have placed your energy into just memorizing the letters and what they mean, you've missed out because it's, it's already in your, your mind. This, this concept is, should be intuitive to us. We know that if I have a, a, a cup of water, all right, that there's an amount of energy required if I want to change the temperature of that water, all right? Um, that cup of water is different than, let's say, a huge lake, right? If I have a, a lake of water, the amount of energy necessary to change the temperature of this water is going to be a lot different. I mean, that's pretty intuitive, right? Yeah, I get that. So um, if I have a cup of not water, but just uh, liquid mercury, let's say, all right, so now here's my water, but here's the same amount of material maybe, but it's uh, mercury, liquid mercury, the same amount of heat added will have a different change in temperature, 
all right? And this is kind of like, a, you know, you put a pan on a hot stove and the pan heats up pretty fast. Um, if you put water in there, then the water absorbs the, the heat and it won't heat up as fast, right? So very similar principle. It depends on the type of material that it is, all right? How much energy is required depends on the type of material, how much of that material, right? And it depends on what kind of temperature change you're after. If you want just one degree Celsius, it's going to take a certain amount. But if you want 10 degrees Celsius change, it's going to take 10 times as much. Okay? So the specific heat is uh, the amount of energy necessary to change one gram of whatever your substance is, one degree Celsius. The change in temperature is the number of degrees in Celsius you're after. And this is the mass of the material that you're going to change the temperature of. All right? Uh, another thing that is always very helpful is the units that are provided because they're always going to provide units and you can just look at the units and see. So for example, the units for specific heat will be provided like this, joules. And remember this negative G means it's, it's underneath. So um, joules uh, gram degrees Celsius is the same as joules per gram degrees Celsius, all right? So um, the units help us. The units help us know what we need to do to our numbers, and they help us remember what this equation is. So do you need to memorize the equation? Only if you don't understand what's going on, but that's not a good thing to not understand what's going on. If you understand what's going on, then um, the equation is something you already know. Okay, so look at these different specific heats for all these different chemicals. They vary significantly. Here's water, 4.184 joules to raise its, one gram of its material, one degree Celsius. But if you're looking at lead, it's only 0.128 joules and it will change one gram of lead, one degree Celsius. Okay, so lots of different temperatures. Here's an example of a problem. We can calculate the specific heat of a metal if it took 235 joules to raise its temperature um, by 2.53 degrees Celsius, and we have 32.91 um, grams of the material. Okay, so we're after specific heat. Now, what is the units for specific heat? For the metal? Yeah. I don't know what the specific heat of the metal is. No, we don't know what the specific heat of the metal, but what are the units for it? Oh, you mean like how much energy for every gram to change one degree Celsius? That's right. So energy, what are the units for energy? Joules. Very good. Joules. Per gram degree Celsius. Very good. Per gram degree Celsius. So that is what we're trying to solve for, right? Oh, yeah. It says calculate the specific heat. Okay. So we know how many joules of energy it took to raise 32.91 grams of the material, 2.53 degrees Celsius. Do you see that? Oh yeah, okay. So 235 divided by the 2.53 degrees Celsius divided by the 32.91 grams? That's right. Okay, so we could, uh, let's see, 235, yeah. We could do that simply by Re recognizing, let's put the joules energy up here, joules, recognizing that we needed to get joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay? All right. Um, in a closed system, 43.29 gram sample of a solid is transferred from boiling water to 152 grams of uh, water at 22.5 degrees Celsius in a coffee cup. Now, what's the what are they trying to say when they say in a coffee cup? Oh, well, I guess they're saying that all the energy is supposed to go from the solid to the water. That's right. That's right. So we took the solid. What was the temperature of the solid to start off with? Uh, it was in the hot water, right? Yeah, maybe we should draw ourselves a picture so we can kind of figure out what's going on here. So we have the solid here. There's my chunk of whatevers, and it is in boiling water to start off with, 
hot water here, the little bubbles, shows that it's boiling, popped bubble. <laughs> okay, so it's hot. What's the temperature of the water? The boiling water? Yeah. 99.8 it says. That's right, it says it's 99.8. Well, if the block is in there, what's the temperature of the block? Does it have to be the same? It does. It has to be 99.8. So it, it was um, 43.29 grams, right? That's what it tells us. Of a 99.5 degrees Celsius block taken out and placed into another container here. And what's in this other container? 152 grams of water. 152 grams of water. And uh, what else do we need to know? It's temperature. What's its temperature? Oh, 22.5 to start off. That's right, 22.5 degrees Celsius. So the block goes into here, and what happens to the temperature of the, the water? It goes up to 24.3. Very good. So if I take the 24.3 minus the 22.5, I get 1.8 degrees, uh, 1.8, which is 1.8 uh, degrees Celsius that the water changed, right? Okay. Let's get this up a little bit higher. Well, actually, we can make this a little bit smaller, too. Okay, so the temperature rose 1.8 degrees Celsius. And, and note that we took, we found that out, we found the change in temperature by taking what? Temperature final, minus temperature initial. Very good, minus temperature initial. So that's change in temperature is 1.8 degrees Celsius. So um, the block changed its temperature 1.8 degrees Celsius. The water also changed its temperature 1.8 degrees Celsius. How do you know the block did that as well? Because the block and the water are in the same container. So they have to reach equilibrium, thermal equilibrium. Okay. Okay, so um, that 1.8 degrees Celsius tells us how much energy the block released and how much energy the water gained. And um, those energies are the same, aren't they? Well, the water gained the energy, but the block lost it? That's right. But the amount of energy has to be the same, doesn't it? Yeah, okay, the amount of energy that the block lost has to equal the amount of energy that the water gained. Very good. So I can calculate how much energy the water gained. How much energy, Q, how much heat energy, of the water that it gained. I can do that by knowing how much mass of water I heated up, right? Uh, how many degrees temperature it changed. And I can also... Uh, I need to know the specific heat of water, how many joules it takes to change a given mass, one degree Celsius, right? Do you remember the specific heat of water? It's 4.184. That's right. 4.184. Do you remember the units? That's joules for every gram degree Celsius. Very good. Joules for every gram degree Celsius. So what are the units going to be for Q over here? That's heat, so that's joules. That's right. I'll put that up there to remind us. And uh, I'll put our units over here for specific heat, joules per gram degree Celsius. Whoops, gram degree Celsius. So what do I have to do to get to joules if I have joules per gram degree Celsius? I have to get rid of these grams, right, and degrees Celsius? Oh, yeah, so you have to multiply by grams. That's right, I have to multiply by grams, and I have to multiply by degrees Celsius. So how many grams, what do I put in here? 43.29. 43.29, isn't that the mass of the block? Yeah. Well, we're looking at how much energy the water gained. So we want to know how much energy or how much, uh, how much energy was required to change the temperature of this mass of water. So we need to use the 152.9. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. 152 grams, sorry, not 152.9, 152 grams of our water. And then what was the change in temperature of that water? That was the 1.8. Very good. So, whoops, degrees Celsius. So now I take my 1.8 
times the 152 times the 4.184, okay? And so that's 1,144, okay? And that's heat energy that the water gained, right? Why are we trying to find out how much heat energy the water gained? I thought we were trying to find the specific heat of the solid. Well, we are trying to find the specific heat of the solid, and that means we need to know the uh, joules that the solid lost for every gram of that solid and how many degrees Celsius it lost, right? But we don't know how much joule, how many joules of energy that block lost. And that's what we're trying to determine because we've just found 1,144 joules. That's how much energy the water gained. So why is that going to be helpful to us? I don't know. Well, didn't we just say that where did this water get its energy from? Oh, the block. That's right. So 1,100 or 1,144 joules is also the amount of energy that the block lost. So we can use that over here for our, our block. 1,144 joules of energy were lost and the temperature change for the block was the same, 1.82, 1 1.8, sorry, 1.8 degrees Celsius and the mass of the block, 43.29. So we just take our 1144 divided by our 43.29, that's the mass, and then divided by our 1.82, that's the change in temperature, so we get 14.53. 14.53 joules for every gram that changed a degree Celsius. So that is our specific heat of our block. See how we did that? I think so. We took the heat that was gained by the water and said that had to be the same as the heat that was lost by the block. And then we took that heat and we divided it by the mass and the change in temperature of the block. And that gave us the specific heat of the block. That's right. Very good. Excellent job. And we could do that because essentially what we knew is that the heat of the block plus the heat of the water and the cup was always zero. Or in other words, all the energy that was lost by the sample had to be gained by the water. Okay, very good.